I want to talk about a surprising way to cleanse toxic kidneys. What you have to realize is that the kidney is just as important as the liver in detoxification. In fact, they work together because the liver does something called phase one, phase two detoxification. And this is where you have various enzymes that are turning fat-soluble poisons into harmless water-soluble particles. So both the gallbladder with its bile and the kidney help to eliminate these water-soluble um, particles that used to be fat-soluble poisons. So if there's any problem with the liver where you don't get this water-soluble breakdown product, then it overloads the kidney and the other parts of the digestive tract. So it's very, very important to have each detoxification organ to be working um, to share the load. So the liver gets hammered with xenobiotics, which are just like chemicals in the environment, uh, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, things like that. Steroid byproducts um, from your own body's production of steroids. That would be like estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, things like that. And then drugs, okay, medications just hammer the liver and the kidneys. Then we have glyphosate, which is in our entire food supply, not to mention it's in the water, it's in foods, it's all over the place. And then you have things like PCBs, which are chemicals in plastics. So the water bottle that you drink, the, the plastic that you microwave your lunch in, all can leach out these um, chemicals and your liver and your kidney have to deal with them. So each year, more chemicals are being pumped out and our environment is becoming more and more toxic. So our bodies are having to deal with this and detoxify them. So the kidneys um, get rid of certain protein uh, byproducts and eliminate urea, ammonia, and uric acid. And so if there's kidney weakness, uh, those things can build up and create um, toxicity. And so the kidney really is just... Um, a composite of millions of tiny little filters, okay? So just filtering things out. And so a really good way to test these little filters is to check something called the GFR, glomerular filtration rate. And that just measures how fast things are being filtered through the kidney. The kidney has to do with uh, heavy metals. Um, the worst heavy metal would be cadmium because the kidney has a very difficult time getting rid of that heavy metal. And cadmium usually comes from smoking because it's in the fertilizer that they use to grow tobacco. It's also in commercial soybeans. So cadmium hits the kidney the most out of any body tissue. In fact, 20% of osteoporosis is caused by cadmium toxicity. Then you have mercury right? Very toxic to the kidneys. Um, mercury fillings, which I had all mine removed. I think every single tooth in my skull had silver mercury fillings. Also, when you consume uh, larger fish, it can be uh, pretty toxic with mercury. Now, as you age, you lose the ability to filter. A 90-year-old has like 50% of kidney function compared to a 20-year-old. And these chemicals that we're exposed to in the kidney destroy the mitochondria. Then you lose more and more ability to detoxify. And then these chemicals accumulate and they recirculate through the body. Then you have NSAIDs, right? So many people are on those for inflammation. Uh, before you had a good prescription, but as soon as those patents ran out, they became over the counter. And so a lot of people are taking way more of those than they really should. And there's no long-term studies on the chronic um, exposure to NSAIDs on different body tissue, especially the kidney. But we do know that if you've been exposed to NSAIDs over three years, um, it can cause irreversible kidney damage. Now, the other very important thing I wanna talk about is the consumption of too much sodium and not enough potassium. When people think about potassium, they immediately think that it's, bad for the kidneys, but it's not. There's a lot of new um, science that shows that potassium is kidney protective. It's called nephroprotection. And I put a lot of the research down in the description so you can check it out. But an average person, at least in the US, consumes between 3.4 grams 
to 4.9 grams of sodium every single day. That's 4,900 milligrams, okay? As far as potassium goes, an average person only consumes 2.1 to 2.6 grams of potassium when they actually need at least 4,700 milligrams every single day. And when you have too much sodium and not enough potassium, there's three big problems. Number one, you, you potentially can get high blood pressure. Number two, heart disease. And number three, chronic kidney disease. You know, many doctors tell patients, focus on sodium, 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 but they're, they don't talk about potassium. The sodium potassium ratio is way more important than just one of these minerals. If you have enough potassium, you're protected against the excess amount of sodium. So in reality, those ratios should be completely uh, reversed. You should have at least twice as much potassium as sodium. And this is mainly due because of low potassium diets. The three things that uh, affect you, especially the kidney, when you are on a low potassium diet is number one, you get inflammation of the kidney. Number two, you get a lot of oxidation and free radical damage on the kidney. And the third thing is fibrosis of the kidney. You're basically going to lose the function of the kidney. Now, the other thing that is also very important, and you may already know this if you watch my other videos, is that the number one thing that destroys the kidney is a high carb diet. Because if you take a look at diabetics, for example, they have four main big problems. They usually always have kidney problems because glucose destroys the kidney filter. High levels of glucose to the kidney create massive oxidation and destroy the kidney. That's why diabetics have such a high risk of uh, being on kidney dialysis long-term. I mean, the big push is to control your blood sugars, but not to control the diet, the high sugar. If you were controlling the blood glucose with medications, where do you think this glucose is going when you take the medication? Is it evaporating? No, it's just going from one place to another. It's being shoved in different parts of the body. Unless you get off these carbs, I don't care how much you try to regulate the glucose in your blood, it's going to create a problem in another place. But the four places that um, high glucose, either being a pre-diabetic or a diabetic effect, is number one, the kidney, number two, the brain and the nerves, three, the vascular system and the heart, and number four, the eye. But diabetic nephropathy is a very common condition with diabetics, and it's destruction of the kidney because you're a diabetic. You have high glucose flowing through your bloodstream. Now, overall, the common symptoms for kidney problems would be anemia, um, high blood pressure, we've already talked about that, itchiness, edema, foamy urine, because you've lost kidney function, and if the kidneys can't filter out the protein, it starts getting foamy. And then you have ammonia breath is another uh, symptom. And then a metallic taste in your mouth and frequent urination, which usually is occurring because you have too much glucose in the bloodstream. Uh, this is why the best thing to do for frequent urination is to give up your carbs and stop snacking at night. It produces dramatic effects within days. Okay, you won't be getting up through the night. I'll put that video down below. And then the last big symptom uh, that occurs with kidney problems is darker urine, okay? Your urine is darker brown because you're getting more byproducts that are going through this filter that's damaged. All right, so this is the list of what to do to start cleaning the kidney. And I think a better word for that would be to improve the detoxification pathways of the kidney. So number one, the most important thing is to eliminate the toxic exposure on your kidneys. So you need to start eating cleaner or going on an organic diet, getting a water filter, making sure that you're on the least amount of medications possible, basically eliminating the things that are destroying the kidney. And it could be just giving up smoking. And it could be also making sure you don't consume any more soy products, right? All right, number two, going on a low carb diet. It's gonna give the kidney a tremendous amount of relief because now there'll be a whole heck of a lot less oxidation going on in the kidney. All right, number three, you need to correct your sodium potassium ratios, okay? Now, I'm not telling you to lower your sodium. All you need to do is make sure your potassium 
is at least twice as high as your sodium. How do you do that? Start eating more avocados, start having bigger amounts of salad, ideally between seven to 10 cups every day. Now, if you're doing other vegetables, you don't have to do that much salad, but you need to start increasing more foods high in potassium. But potassium is protective on the kidney. And I'm going to put all that data down below as well. All right. Number four, if you have a lot of kidney stress, okay, uh, you don't want to overload it with too much protein. You want to go on a moderate protein diet. When you overload the kidneys with too much protein, you can end up with foamy urine. You can put a little more stress on the kidneys because your body can only deal with so much protein. It doesn't store protein like fat and carbohydrates. It has to deal with this excess protein. So it either has to turn it into uh, urea as a waste product, or it has to turn it into glucose as fuel. So too much protein is not a good idea for the kidney. All right, number five, there are foods that you should be eating to naturally enhance the detoxification of the kidney. And let me just go through the list. Garlic. Garlic will increase the clearance of urea and other, and other byproducts from the kidney. Then we have asparagus, okay? Now, when you eat asparagus, you have this weird smell going on in your urine. That's not toxic material. It's something else for another video. But asparagus is really good to help you detoxify the kidney. And then we have celery, another good detoxifier. And then parsley, awesome. Parsley is also good to help eliminate heavy metals from the body. Cilantro is also good as well. Then we get turmeric, which is awesome for the kidney. Uh, cruciferous vegetables. Those are good for the liver, but they're also equally as good for the kidney. Berries, especially blueberries, are really good for kidney detoxification. And then green tea. The phytonutrient in green tea can really help the kidneys detoxify effectively. Now, if you haven't checked out my video on the best way to clean the liver, I think that would be appropriate. Check it out right here.